Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Mind Heist episode 58. 57, no? Mm, no, I think it's 58. <laughs> why? Is... I mean, it's just the number. That's why we don't know. Is no, because... it is 57. Yeah. It is. Yes. Last episode was 56 Stoicism and Islam. Mm. Fighting laziness. Islam. Islam, it's 57, bro. Yes. It's 57. Bro, we got a question. I want to address it right now. Okay. Because I read it last night and it made me feel it made me feel really bad. Shed a tear. <laughs> <It> said, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't I had a bad night's sleep because of it. Mm. It said, Salaam alaikum. This is not a question, but feedback on the way you may be conducting your podcast. Okay. I've been listening to the podcast for some time now and I found them beneficial in different ways. May Allah accept it and reward you both. I mean, now sometimes when they say I mean, I like to think they're talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said it's like comma. I mean, so mm. this is addressed to you. <laughs> <laughs> it says, um, "Okay, my suggestion is to keep all distractions such as browsers and apps away slash close closed." Unless needed. For example, looking up a reference during a podcast. I'm not present with either of you whether I can say what's going on. But it does seem that sometimes someone will explain something and ask for feedback from the other person. And it seems at that moment the other person is just, quote, tuning in. Because they were distracted doing something else. <laughs> For instance, episode, episode 53, Becoming a Father slash Parental Roles, and the last episode about stoicism, building habits, Q&A, felt as if the full attention wasn't being given at times. In contrast... I really enjoyed episode 55 for about voting because it seemed as both of you were fully there mm. and focused on the subject and Allah knows best. Uh, well, yes, yes, yes. You know, I noticed this fully last episode. Really? I thought the last episode being good. Bro, you know what it is, yeah? The clicks that were very loud. And I'm not going to say which side the, the noise was coming from, yeah? But the clicks were pretty loud. Clicks what? Uh, computer clicks? Yes. Oh, I don't remember. Was I doing something? Uh, I think, you know, you were doing... Uh, uh, the first, like, ten minutes, there were clicks from your mic, and then later on, I think I was clicking some stuff. So I, I, I actually uh, noticed it, and I was like, yeah, that's not really good, is it? Oh, no. Mm. Oh, no. Mm. God forbid. Mm. God forbid we do 57 episodes and get distracted. Mm. But it's, uh, <laughs> no. On a level, though, I appreciate the feedback. But nine times out of ten... As you can probably hear a lot of the times, it's 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 my family around me. I'm going to bl- put the blame on them. Mm. I get distracted when he's screaming and, oh, Lord, <clears throat> this morning, bro, bro, just screaming and shouting and I haven't slept. Mm. So anyway, mm. on to the, the main, mm. the main, today's main attraction, mm. whatever that may be. Yeah. I've got my coffee with me. All right. Great. That won't distract me. I just need to stay awake. <laughs> Lack of sleep <laughs> is the biggest distraction this week. Oh, wallahi lali. Parenthood. Yeah. Oh. How are you finding it, bro? Alhamdulillah, nothing negative. But I want to know if you felt the same. Like the first few months, um, did you find. Like, obviously, try to be uh, objective, right? Because right now you're living through the terrible twos struggle, right? Uh, but. Trying to be objective, was the first few months difficult or was it easy, do you think? Hmm, I think it was easy, bro. It was like one big roller coaster of, of happiness. Mm, yeah. And like, yeah. you know, life was easy, man. I had a... Oh my God, can you hear him screaming? Oh bro? yes, loud and clear. This is what I mean. Like, sure, that if that isn't distracting, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, alhamdulillah, I was living at my mom's. My mm. mom made things so easy. Okay, and, yeah. And then I had a really easy job. <laughs> mm, mm. And all I had to focus on was just like, I don't know, being there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bro, there's like videos. There's videos of me like with with Suleiman on my lap. Mm. And I'm playing Xbox like all night. Mm. It's like easy, bro. <laughs> yeah. God forbid. That doesn't happen now, man. Yeah. Oh, Lord, look at this. Mm. It's literally, it sounds like he's tearing the house down. Mm. Anyway, um, yeah, like you sent me a video of, of your little boy the other day, mm-hmm. and I was showing it to Suleiman, and he was like, oh, it's a baby, it's a baby. <laughs> uh, 
and he loved it. Nice. And I, it reminded me of you know the the, the <laughs> easier times. <laughs> you were gonna say the good old days. <laughs> it was. But it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I th- so I think it's honestly I can't say there's much difficulty in it. Alhamdulillah. You know, sometimes I think the first two months was harder than later on. Hmm. Um, but uh, it's fine. And it, you know, obviously the mother does a lot more work than the father, at least in the first, you know, I don't know, year or I don't know, I guess I'll find out. But yeah. definitely heavier on the mother at the beginning. And, hmm. um, and you know, that's life, I suppose. That's how it is. Um, so it's been good, alhamdulillah. But I just honestly, um, I think I've said this before, I think going to Hajj, making du'a, I think that honestly is playing a big role in this. I honestly think that because I've heard of uh, other people, a few of my friends actually, they had kids at uh, the same time as me. And, you know, some of them are kind of have more complaints than me sometimes. And mm. so I think it's case by case. But my with with my sample of one, <laughs> I, I'm saying Alhamdulillah is pretty good so far. So how has it affected you in terms of, I mean, has it affected you in any way? Do you feel like you've had a drastic sort of shift in your life? Um, n- no. <laughs> the, the only, the, the biggest change maybe is like, uh, phew, let me think, uh, like maybe obviously I don't, I uh, go out, when I go out, which I don't do much anyway, right? But when I go out, it's harder to go with my wife because I have to bring the baby and then you just feel yeah. like, you feel like it's not worth going out anymore. Okay. Yeah. So, but then, yeah. I suppose I don't know Allah but I suppose your wife might feel a type of way about that. Uh, my like, my wife. I my don't know how often she would have gone out before. Exactly. She she didn't go out much anyway. Uh, so so it's not a huge um a huge difference I guess for her, but uh, you know sometimes you know you want to change of scenery you want to go out but but now it's more you have to weigh it up in your mind like is it worth going out if you if you have to bring the baby um yeah. but i kind of obviously man i can go out on my own okay so i don't it's not a big deal i do i do like going out with my wife right um so i can't do that so that's a shame but i can still go out at least so i don't feel like it's a big compromise um, can you go out hmm. can you go out without any guilt uh yeah i can't definitely. leave the house without guilt bro Really? Okay. Like, yeah, honestly, like yesterday was the first time in a long time mm. that I went out uh, for Juma and then sort of stayed out mm. a little bit. Mm. Not that I even saw anyone. I literally just stayed out because I thought, oh my God, I'm staying out. Yeah, <laughs> naughty boy. I, I, I felt so guilty, bro. Really? Okay. That I had to, I had to, I felt like the only way I could sort of quell the guilt is by buying things for them and then coming home mm. do you know what i mean okay um, you know remember when we were in london i was telling you about this idea of going out uh i didn't say it but we say it now guilt free going out guilt free one day a week uh do your thing do your socializing meet any friends uh mm. you know this kind of thing one day a week i think it's a very reasonable you know uh, and that's kind of what I tend to do. Uh, if, maybe if I lived in a, another city, I had uh, more friends in my city, I had more things to do. Maybe I would go out more than once a week. But mm. the way I'm living right now, um, one day a week is, is about right. And I don't really have any guilt. The thing is, bro, it's like, it depends, of course, Yanni, how, you're, how your family's set up, the expectations between yourself and all of that, right? But, yeah. um, you know, maybe think of it like this, like, Okay, you're leaving your wife to deal with your son, right? To to look after him, Yanni. To deal yeah. with Yanni, maybe it's not the best word. Um, to look deal after him. him. Get but, the belt out. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because deal with it makes it sound like it's an annoyance, but that, that's mean, not yeah. negative. La- that's like negative language. So your wife is dealing with that, right? But don't you see that as her kind of primary job, if you like? And you yeah. you struggle plenty with your primary job. So isn't that only fair that everyone has their job and it might be difficult, but that's life, isn't it? Everyone's struggling with their job, if you like. I suppose. But what I would argue, and I suppose this is what she, you know, my wife's always argued, is that okay. I can clock out and she can't. Yeah. You know, so her job will carry on. Yeah. But I, again, we said we, we said you can't uh, you can't really do the maths on what's fair, what's not fair. It's very difficult. Mm. Right. But um, for example, you 
you probably had some level of pressure to get uh, get into a good career, a good job since you were, I don't know, 18, 17, some yeah. people earlier than that, some people Younger, a little yeah, bit yeah. later. So, for example, when you went to uni, you're, every time you're doing an exam or you've got a, a, a paper to do or whatever, you're in the back, back of your head, you're thinking about, I've got to do this because I've got to get the degree, because I've got to get a job, because I've got to provide. Uh, women are not doing that so much so you get all these little yeah. things kind of you know what i mean but i mm. do i do think a big thing which um kind of takes men off the hook a little bit uh today is the lack of uh need if you i don't know how to say it but basically men are not going to war like not the average man's not going to war anymore so i think that does change things quite a lot and if yeah, that was a f yeah. factor in everyday life, like the average man at some time would be going to some kind of front line or whatever, then I think it would rapidly uh, even things out or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm. I was thinking this yesterday about um, I was listening to some something, some mm. Islamic thing. Mm. They were talking about how um, how like different civilizations would train their kids at such young ages like... Uh, I think it was Mufti actually. He was talking about Genghis Khan and how mm. Genghis Khan would train his sons at like the age of two and three to ride horses. You'd be and shocked. I, yeah. You'd be shocked. And I was looking at my son, who is of the age of two yeah. to three. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to let him ride a horse. Uh. <laughs> like, like, what? And he, he was saying, like, you know, if you never let them, mm. we always hold kids back by saying they're too young, they're too young, yeah. they're too young. Until and they're 25 living in the mom's basement. Exactly, bro. But then I just thought, like, well, none of us. Like, I was like, well, I don't even know how to ride a horse. And then I thought, mm. well, it, it must have been. It must have been normal for people to train in the arts of warfare mm. and self-defense and all this other stuff. Um, and I thought, like, well, that some would argue that there's a necessity now, considering the dangers that are out there. Like, I can't mm. leave the house without looking over my shoulder mm. anymore. Like, it's just mm. natural now. Um, Urban crime. Maybe I should yeah. do something, mm. but um, yeah, I just revert back into my my heavyweight my heavyweight championship title of <laughs> of what <laughs> of keto just eating too much <laughs> eating too much, bro. God, I just feel so big. Mm. I feel the opposite. Really, bro. I I didn't know this was possible, but I just keep losing weight more and like more and more. Um, like what's what's the secret, man? It's, it's just de success. decreasing your intake, really. Just eating less, you know. Okay. Just eating Maybe. less. It's easy for some. You know, I thought it's I was not easy less, though. It's but... not easy. Like I love food. I don't know. Maybe I love food more than you, but I don't know. I guess. Okay. So my initial motivation for doing it was like clarity of mind and kind of productivity and focus in that post lunch kind of time. OK, yeah. So that's why the first thing I, I uh, planned to do was instead of having a proper lunch, I just have salad and that's very light. And then I'll be able to focus for those like, uh, let's say, 1 p.m. to, you know, kind of at time, like, let's say, 4 p.m. That sometimes I find myself getting very little done. So that was the initial motivation, you know. But yeah. but now I guess because I've been doing that, bro, like one hour after eating that salad, I'm starving. Right. But then I just kind of, because I'm focused on my work, I'm able to just ignore that hunger and I just get on with stuff. So it's become easier and stuff over time. Mm. Yeah. Maybe I'll take a note out of your book. I mean, I'm staring at three biscuits right now. <laughs> right in front but of the me. thing is as well, like in the evening, um, I eat like pretty much whatever I want. I, generally, I don't like, uh, you know, typical unhealthy stuff, but I do, I don't really worry about what I eat because... It's only once a day you're having that meal anyway, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah. So yeah, but um, back to the thing of uh, feeling guilty. I just uh, the thing is, Yanni. Some things uh, like men are built to go outside more. Okay, uh, whether that you want to look at it purely from a natural point of view or from the dean as well, Yanni. Men have to pray salah in the masjid. So there's no reason to feel guilty. The fact that you're going to the masjid, you're going to get a, a rest, if you like, from the, from the kids, right? You are, mm. um, especially if you know you you decide that in order to avoid spending so much time with the kids, uh, you add a few, you know, of car and this and that. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. Um, in all seriousness, 
you you must go to the masjid and so uh that means you know an hour or so a day uh, you're going to not be at home, you know, and there's no need to feel guilty about that. That's your duty to Allah, yani. And then yeah. you're going to be going out there um, uh, working. And then, you know, in previous times, you'd be going out there maybe months at a time fighting, putting your limbs and life on the line. Um, and honestly, yani, everyone should be prepared for this stuff anyway these days. So I don't know, man. I think, uh, yes, the modern world has kind of changed a lot of things and messed a lot of the balances up. But generally, it's kind of like, it is it is what it is, Yanni. Even if things are harder for you or your wife, it's like, it is what it is. Like, what can we do? I don't really know what we could do about it, really. Mm. I, t- I always have this fear that we're, like, forcing, like, uh, not ways of life, but, like, we make too many grand assumptions about how things were. and then Of course, I always feel now. that, man. When we're talking yeah. about the past... I always want to bring my friend uh, Yusuf on, who's like uh, like a history nerd, and just make sure w- you know these assumptions are correct, kind of thing. Yeah, like one thing I'd like to know is like mm. during the Prophet Sallallahu time, Sallam, yeah. the average Sahabi or the average individual mm. in Medina, like what were the work hours like? Like what was mm. it like? Yeah, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like my assumption is more like it was a fajr till. Dohor kind of work life mm, possibly which yeah. kind of exists in some areas now mm. you know mm. in, like in Tunisia for example in the summer mm. rarely like people w- will work from Fajr till Dohor that's when the markets and stuff open mm-hmm. and then after Dohor it's too hot so yes. everyone goes to bed yes. and then rarely does anyone really like any sort of old school places open up after that mm. um but you know, banks and stuff will, and all that, all yeah, that jazz. Yeah, I think it also depends on the vibe you're on, because uh, a lot of, I think a lot of the reasons that they, for example, the you know sellers in the market, they close after the let's say they don't open up again after asr. Some you know shops mm. shops do open up after asr, isn't it? But um, market wise, it's a small window. Okay, now by doing that, by closing up uh, at Dhuhr time you are limiting the amount of money you can make. But mm. I, I feel like people that are in that mode of, of earning a living that way, they kind of have this way of thinking of it's enough. Like they're not chasing more and more money, even though they know they could make it. Um, and I don't know what's going on in their mind, why they do that. But it's interesting, Andy, to think of this idea of, yeah, I've got enough for today or for the next seven days or whatever. And, you know, next week, inshallah, yani, Allah will give me enough yeah. for the next seven days. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, a lot of people, they're instead, they're like, oh, whenever there's opportunity for more, they're going to grab more, it. More, yeah. I'm really ignorant as to how the average Muslim in, I don't know, Algeria or Tunisia, wherever, um, how, like, what their wallet looks like. I know it sounds really bad, like, mm. but, like, what their bank account looks like. How does it actually play out? Because sometimes mm. I just see individuals that look... Like they wouldn't have a lot, yes, right, and then they just like something will come up and they'll they'll go and pay for it, yeah, or they'll go, and I don't know if that's like the amazing barakah that Allah has given them, mm. or if everybody there just lives on credit, mm. and I have a feeling it's probably the latter mm. because I feel like a lot of people don't have these qualms about credit and and being in debt and stuff, mm. um like I see people that for example, in Tunisia, I see people that live in the village are buying new cars. Mm. And I'm like, how are they even affording that? That's insane. Yeah. Because when I look at prices of cars over there, I'm gobsmacked. Like, it's so much more expensive than here. Mm. So I think I have this feeling that, like, obviously people don't talk about it out in the open. But it, it'd be interesting. Like, you know, you get people with, like, little corner shops that are in the middle of nowhere mm. that have always stayed there. Whilst in the UK, you'd have... You might have something like that that doesn't last long. Yeah. Before you know, it has to shut down. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't know. You know, things last a long time. Mm. Things will be, you know, there's shops that have been, yeah, you know, where I grew up that have been there since before I was born. Yeah. And I don't know how it they maintain. I don't know how. Mm. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot less ambition for money, to be honest. At really? least in the smaller cities, and I think this is worldwide. You know, rural area, kind of. You know, rural culture, innit? it? No matter yeah. where you go in the world, the people that don't live in cities, they all, you know, often they have these kind of ways of thinking or lifestyle where it's like it's very relaxed. Uh, you could say less ambitious materially, uh, less ambitious and stuff. So 
it's interesting and it's uh whenever i go go over there it's like it's refreshing uh i i i worry if i was to live there what it would do to me because you know i i try to be ambitious i try to think beyond just feeding my family i need to do something for the ummah kind of thing mm. so i feel like it's terrible in that sense but it's also interesting in the other sense because it frees up time sometimes to uh, spend more time with family and these kind of things. But then again, it's like time with family is it's not just one quality. Some time with family is just watching TV or gossiping. Mm. And some time with family is very enriching and very good. So it's complicated, isn't it? Maybe. I feel like there's still that ambition, bro. Like I feel like one of the biggest sort of issues that rural areas have is this mm. fascination with land and owning more land mm. um, and like like really deeply comparing themselves to neighbours because everyone lives in such a close mm. proximity yeah, like, village and everyone yeah. knows everybody it's like oh did you hear that so and so and such and such has this now and mm. and it leads you to talk more about Mm. It fall, you fall into talking more about people because you know people more so you mm. know that maybe they can't afford it or where did they get that money from or blah 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 mm. as opposed to maybe us like we're a lot more detached so yes we do see stuff on like Instagram social media and stuff um, but we won't like deeply question where people got the money from yeah. because we could assume that oh yeah we don't really know much about what they do for a mm. living or what you know what I mean like a lot of people on, mm. online don't actually share what they do for a living yeah do you know what I mean? But yeah. in a small, like, rural area, everybody knows what everybody does. Yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? True, true. Um, you know, out, out here, you know, everyone associates UAE with uh, everyone having money and stuff. And, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of people with good salaries, but everyone's still in big debt. Like, everyone's yeah. still living on credit, you know? Like, where the new whatever comes out car, everyone's buying it, man. Everyone's got mm. this new car, whatever it is. And I'm just looking at it and I'm like, yeah, that's a bunch of credit, you know. Is that even a halal loan? Like, uh, maybe, maybe not, right? Um, so, yeah, you know, Emiratis, you know, they have good salaries a lot of the time, but they're also spending, you know, 300K on a wedding. Yeah, and he, like in pounds, that would be like uh, 50,000 pounds on weddings. And, you know, so a lot of people are in crippling debt, even though on the surface it looks good and i know in the uk it's even worse yanni big culture over there of borrowing mm. borrowing in the moment and then you suffer later mm. i said did i say that to you last episode about one of my colleagues saying that oh this christmas i'm gonna go debt free or something like that he said he said that like we were, we were go all getting like debt this, what sorry debt free so we were all getting this like bit of money Whoops. all coming in because of I don't know, some pension stuff. And then people are like, oh, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? And I've, obviously I'm thinking, mm. okay, my baby's coming. I'm going to sort that out and sort this out and whatever. Mm. And he's like, oh, finally, I'm going to pay off my credit card debt. And I was like, what? And I, I found it really weird because obviously I, I've got a culture in me whatsoever of yeah. credit cards and stuff. Didn't really realize that that's what people are doing. And then it kind of started making sense. Like people that are on the same wages as me mm. are, are driving nicer cars, going on holidays, doing all these other stuff, mm. and like keeping up appearances. Mm. I'm like I can't manage. I don't. I don't understand how people are doing this. And then realizing, yeah, it's all you know, it's all ball and chain and, and, and debt slavery. Yeah, Crazy, it really bro. sucks, man. It really Crazy. sucks. You know what's funny? Uh, I was listening to Freshly Grounded, the episode with, I think it's called uh, Mr. Halal Money. Oh, yeah. Did you listen to that? Yeah, Mr. Halal Money's my guy, bro. Okay. Oh, you know him? <laughs> okay. Uh, I was meant to meet him a few times. We speak a lot online. Mm, very good. So, it <laughs> crack me up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the episode he's got this aura ring yeah to measure his sleep yeah he's like oh, oh yeah he's like i'm all about measuring my sleep optimizing this and that then Faisal asks him oh how do you like optimize your sleep when you've got a baby or kids or whatever and then he's like he's like to be honest bro he's like i don't know if i should say this but to be honest bro sometimes i just go to my wife and i just say i need to sleep and then i just 
I just go and I just sleep and like she deals with it. <laughs> I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Interesting oh, way of dealing with it. <laughs> bro, everyone's different, you know. That's one thing like I wanted to touch on. Like everybody's different with this parenting thing. Like, mm. when I met when I was speaking to Faisal and stuff and obviously he's announced recently that he's a he's a, he's a daddy in that. Mm. Um but when I when I was seeing him and stuff, I already knew. Mm. And um he his sort of mindset with things is very similar to mine like his need to be engaged and that's really what kind of matters to him and all of that Mm -hmm. but then there's other brothers i know that are so detached from the whole reality like they're only there for the good times Mm. (laughs) you know okay they sort of they play around with their kid or whatever when it suits them and then when it doesn't okay here you go Mm. i'm out or i'm gone or i'm off where where do i sit in the spectrum i don't know yet i mean you're a bit of an anomaly anyway Mm. let's be real mm. uh, but we'll see how it plays out mm. I think obviously you'll probably be more the, more like us but in the same I wouldn't put you in the same box whatever those boxes are mm. sounds like, like I'm millions. between the two that you mentioned yeah but at the same time like it'd be interesting to see how yours plays out because yeah it's early generally day. you're working at home anyway mm. I don't know if you have separate spaces mm. for work and of course sure you have do. to yeah yeah, but at the same time, like that is going to be mm. intruded on. No, I will not. Time. I will not be continuing working at home when you know my son grows up. You know, impossible. Yeah, impossible. Yeah. So that's another impossible. cost. Otherwise, but, you'd have hey. you'd have the distractions I'm having right now. Yeah, like, no, yeah. impossible. You know the way I'm planning on doing it. You know, this is a plan, but we'll see the reality. I don't have experience yet. Um, so I, what I would like to have an office. Go work. Work in the office. Um, you know, I've determined that really to get a good amount, solid amount of work done, you need to be very focused. And But if you're very focused and you're not distracted and you're just pl- plowing through work, you only need to work like five hours a, a day, right? Mm. So now, of course, you, you'll never be Ooh. 100% efficient, which means five hours in reality, you need to be at the computer, if you like, for six to seven hours to actually get that five hours. But... I want to get as close to sitting at the computer for five hours and getting five hours work done as possible. Okay. Yeah. So, so I want to do that and that'll be in the office office. That'll be away from home. Um, and then I have other projects that I want to be doing. Okay. So then it might be, um, an hour as well doing that. And then I might come home and then maybe when my son's asleep, maybe I'll do another hour of, of stuff. So I just, I love how planned you are. Mm. Like I'm going to do this and this is what's going to happen. Is it? But why, why can't you do that? Like, if you have a separate bro. space to work, oh, um, plans never plans never come through. I've I've always been like a, a spontaneous guy. Like, my wife yeah. wants to plan things. Like, my wife at the moment she's trying out meal planning. Yeah. for the week. Yeah. Right? So this week we're gonna do this. This week we're gonna do that. Mm. This day, like, do you know what I mean? And then mm. when I walk to shop and stuff. Yeah, that's then, like sick. straight away. Like things just go south. And oh no, actually, let's just get this today. And blah blah blah. Hmm. Bro, like nothing. I don't know why. Maybe like, just gotta it force is. it for the first few weeks and until it becomes like a habit or something. A habit. Yeah, maybe I need to reread that book. That's hmm. what we had. I don't think I even finished it. Yeah, I guess it's, I it's also a personality up. thing. But mm. that's what I wanted to discuss with you one day. I always th- thought about this topic of. You know, the whole being like super organized versus being spontaneous. Um, like, I'm obviously, I'm very like trying to be organized. But you know why that is? It's because I literally, I just see the benefits of it, right? So mm. I'm sure that you wouldn't see the benefits and then just not do it. So mm. what is the difference between you know, what's going on in our minds? I feel like I can't produce any work if I'm not in it. So if I'm, t- uh, sorry, like, if I'm not mentally sort of in the mood or whatever you want to call it oh. and maybe that's what it is I think my biggest difference between like me and you that I've identified is I feel like you have this Allahu alam, this could just be an assumption you have an aura of consistency in your mind in your mental state and I don't know if that's because you've put yourself in either not just a spiritual routine of okay you're praying your salat generally in the masjid or you've set aside particular times of the day so basically your iman doesn't not necessarily Iman, but your motivation, Iman, mm. a lot of emotions combined, mm. a lot of you know things to do with your mental state combined, mm. don't waver that much because you're always inputting a very similar amount each time. Right. You know? You've got the same sort of um, influences all the time, more or less. Mm. Am I correct in saying that? Maybe. No, I, I mean, okay, yeah, I'm consistent, but 
it might just be then because I don't feel as much. Like my okay. feelings are not as strong, so maybe they would have less effect on my motivation or something. Right. But also, that I think a it, big then. factor that I've identified is maybe you're the same though. I don't know. Um, is that I don't have a lot of people who are able to influence my schedule, if you like. Right. Mm. So I've got very few people who are ever going to influence what I'm able or not able to do. Right. I don't mm. have people calling me. You know, if someone calls me, most of the time I will not answer. Right. And they know, yeah. then they eventually they're going to learn, okay, just WhatsApp the guy. Yeah. So that's just one example. Um, I, you know, like I said, I, I see friends one day a week. Other than that, my friends are not involved in my life. Mm. Um, when I'm working, obviously my wife knows I'm working, so I'm working. Um, uh, like when I'm dealing with my uh, uh, business and the people I work with, my colleagues, um, it's all over Slack. So we have some scheduled meetings, but when it comes to replying on Slack, it's like when it suits me, I reply. So I don't know. It's like I don't have anyone. It's rare somebody could just impose something on my schedule. So I think that's a huge factor. But but, but that aside, mm. doesn't your mood sort of like how does you how would you describe your mood? That's the, probably the main the main thing that I see consistency in you. Mm. Because I'll wake up <clears throat> like I, like I wake up some days just like feeling awful. Like mm. Nothing's happened, but I just feel awful. Mm. Like it happened to me the other day. I um I can't remember. Was it not not what day is it today? Yesterday was Friday, so Thursday. I just felt bad, bro. Like I got up and I just felt bad all day, and mm. I couldn't put my finger on it. And because of that, like even if I had made any plans, mm. and I don't know if that's something to do with my own mental health and something I should probably get checked out, mm. but I have it all the time. Like I'll just get up and I'll have days where I just can't put my finger on why I'm feeling a certain way, mm. and because of that, it just affects everything else that I do. Yeah. So. I mean, I have, you know, like a few months ago when uh, my business looked a bit differently and it, it required more dealing with clients and uh, people, isn't it? <laughs> dealing with yeah. people. Um, I, I really didn't like that side of uh, the work, but I did it anyway kind of thing. And yeah, yeah, maybe some days I would wake up kind of feeling like, oh, today's the day of that client meeting or something mm. like that. Um, so maybe, but honestly... I don't know whether to put it just on Allah giving me something or whether I've actually done something to get to where I am. So the thing that maybe Allah just gave me is that I don't have strong feelings. So yeah, yani, if you don't have strong feelings, then the feelings are going to be easy to just swat away like a fly. You know, yeah. the negative ones, if you like. Okay. Obviously, there's the downside. Uh, you know, I think I've mentioned before briefly, Yanni. There's obvious downsides of not having strong feelings. So that's one thing that I just, you know, naturally have, quote unquote. But also, you can't deny that for like ten years I've been reading different books on mastering your mindset and stuff. Yeah. And so you can't say that you would read books over years and years, make some kind of effort to implement it, and then it just has no benefits. You know, yeah. So I think that definitely must play some role. Uh, the whole mindset thing. Yeah, I think a lot of it is it's going to be like I've been trying to figure myself out, and I think a lot of it is like input versus output, isn't it? Okay. Uh, like, what are you putting into your mind, mm -hmm. and and how is that? Because you feel certain types of way, and like, there's no clear way of me being able to say I feel like this because of this yes you know, like if my wife asks me then I, I can't give an answer because I just don't know mm. but then I try and like assess what I've been up to like what have I been putting in my mind and yeah. all this other stuff I'm like well, okay it could be all of these things combined mm -hmm. because individually you wouldn't see a, much of an issue mm -hmm. but then combining them all like so uh, one thing, for example, is like due to the nature of my work, I haven't been able to go to Shumai in a long time, mm. right? Um, and I live quite far from the nearest Meshid anyway. Uh, so going there and coming back probably take over an hour. Subhanallah. Maybe, or Crazy. maybe an hour, I don't know. Mm. So by the time I even get here, I have to go back to pray our service. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I'd, I'd spend all my days, especially in the winter months, just going back and forth. Mm. Um, or not coming back at all, you know. But then I can't not come back because there's a lot to do. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so but because of that, so yesterday I went to Jouma, 
and it was like exactly what I needed, bro. Mm. Like, and because of that, I felt so much better. And then I realized, oh, that's why I probably felt the way I did. And I had this conversation with a brother that's there, bro, and he's 15, bro. Okay. And every time I go to the mission, he's there, like guaranteed. Great. I don't understand. Like, he he went. He goes to the same school that I used to go to when I was younger, and like just seeing the way, he, like he talks to me about how. He's basically surrounded by idiots, mm-hmm. and you know he's you know he's a fifteen year old kid, bro. That's surrounded by fifteen year old non Muslims that get up to fifteen year old things, mm-hmm. and he just keeps himself to himself, bro. He showed me his book collection of you know books <laughs> that he's got Islamic books, and he's like, yeah, I just sit in the canteen during lunch times and I read my books, mm. and I'm like, bro, like how do you even exist? <laughs> like he doesn't mix with anyone. Mm. He you know he, I'm sure he, they probably see him as strange and a bit of a loner, but he's so focused and, and determined mm. on he wants to become an imam mm. but I'm like and I think the, what's more fascinating is the fact that he's gone to the same school that I've gone to mm. so I can sort of imagine it very easily the, the surroundings that he's got and, and all this other stuff I'm like subhanAllah and I said to him uh, he goes to me he asked me a question yesterday he goes oh what was it like during your generation like because I'm struggling to sort of mix with people here because there's not that many people blah 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 and I said to him like bro I wasn't even practicing in your age. He goes, well, what do you mean? I was like, I didn't start practicing until I was like 18. He goes, oh, that's so old. And he made me feel really bad. Yeah. But, but you know what I mean? Like, I thought I'd start practicing young. But then I see kids like this, bro. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm fascinated. Mm. Um, I can't remember what, what my the objective of this story was. What was I trying to get at? Mm. Uh, trying to talk about mindset. Yeah. So, yeah. He's reading so he was, and all of that. Yeah, so he's constantly like there, constantly reading, constantly, and you'd think that he's like a bit of a mm, maybe a loner because yeah. he's yeah because he's on his own and there's not many peers around him. But bro, mm. he's always smiling, mm. always in the message. Mm. Like that's what he wants to be, bro. That's what he's I like. Such bro. A, that's the yeah, he's that's the, the Trojan horse. You don't know what's <laughs> inside him. <laughs> that's the thing, and he's 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 developed such a close relationship with the imams and stuff, and because he's he's developed relationship with people that are older than him it's, it's inadvertently made him more mature mm-hmm. uh, that age doesn't really have to be a barrier to who he socializes with and who he sits with and stuff mm-hmm. like the fact that he's even coming up to me you know I'm 10 years older yeah, than him, yeah. he's coming up to me and talking to me whenever he sees me he wants to talk like it's fascinating really yeah. it just shows you that shows he's actually he's not just a, a weirdo kind of shy person when he's mm. in the right environment, he's very open and sociable. So mm. that sounds like a very uh, like a kid with a lot but, of potential. Yeah, may Allah allow him to fulfill it. Exactly. I mean, what fascinates me is the consistency element. Like, he's always there. Mm. So then, his mood is always similar. I think that's one thing that I've struggled with the most. Mm. I don't know if everybody else is. Like there's two, I'd say there's two types of me. There's this that we're talking now, like the maybe loud and and I don't know energetic and whatever, like making jokes all the time. Mm. And then there's there's days where I'm just completely silent. Mm-hmm. And it, people at work have noticed it. Like I'll come in and there will be days where I just don't say anything to anyone. Mm. People think someone's died, and I've always been like that. Yeah, I'll go from one extreme to another where mm. I can be either too energetic and had a few too many red bulls and all that mm. and then i'll have days where i'm like just not i don't want to talk to anybody mm. like from yeah super high super low i think that just sounds like it's like the the hallmark of somebody who has quite strong emotions in general i think that's possibly that's a part of it uh it just actually how do i fix that bro i want to fix it bro i want to be i want to be yeah. somewhat on a level yeah i mean you know? i think there's a oh, you can actually you can do that right but I don't know if you should like put it on yourself to change that because that seems to be just your nature. I don't know. I think it's very dangerous to say the your actual personality needs to change. Mm. Like that's a bit of a. I don't maybe know. Maybe that's what it is. Like, I think my maybe like it's become my personality, or it always has been. Mm. And then mm. when I do things to try and change that, that's why I'm never consistent with it because I always default to what I naturally am. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, exactly. I'll default to my personality as opposed to a bad habit or whatever. Mm. Um, mm. But it's hard because people will say, oh, you're not yourself or what's wrong or has mm. something happened? I mean, uh, it just depends if you're, you know, they might find it strange that you're different. But if you're, mm. 
different in a way that you're happy with and that's pleasing to Allah, then maybe that's a good thing, you know. But again, any yeah, change will take uh, years, so you, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. There's a lot of things that subtly affect mood and stuff, though, like mm -hmm. sleep. Sleep is a main one. Oh, big one, huge uh, one. Um, I think sleep might be the one that's probably doing it the most. Mm. Um, diet, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, what well, another one is like lack of. I was looking into this with my wife, like vitamin D deficiencies. Okay. Like not so being under the clouds all winter. Yeah, not just that, but like imagine. Okay, here's here's my wife, right? She but she wears a niqab, she wears a jibab, she's covered all the time, bro. Mm -hmm. She doesn't get to go out too much, and then when she does, she's completely covered. Mm. So what does that do in terms of vitamin D deficiency, and how does that affect mm. the mind, you know? And I was thinking that as well. Like, I don't like going out too much um, because I'm always out for work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to be at home. Mm. You know, lack of fresh air, yeah. lack of, all these little minuscule yes, yes. uh, things. There was another study that was done recently that I looked into, and it was to do with pollution mm. and how. Now, obviously, it's really difficult to sort of separate environmental factors when it comes to these studies, but they were talking about the effect that pollution has on mental health. Mm. Now, people in the comments and stuff were saying, well, this could just be a, mm. uh, you know, this could be just the effect of living mm. in a big city, yeah. right? And that's you know the hustle. Yeah, the hustle it could be correlation, not there. causation. Mm. But apparently, these this study, I, I wish I had it on me. This study was specifically looking at like the actual effects on the brain that the particles found in bad air or whatever right. would would have on the brain. Right. And they they found a strong link to sort of stress, depression, and mm. and po air pollution and stuff yeah. like that. Um, which you know this is this is what I'm talking about like little 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 things will build up collectively to yeah. to to make someone the way they are yeah, yeah. so it wouldn't surprise me bro like living in a city where I mean we're breathing all of this in yeah. the stuff that we eat all of this stuff mm. and then it just makes us mentally quite volatile mm. Mm. no that yeah 100% but mm. you know the trouble with that is you feel powerless when it comes to those things yeah. isn't it that, yeah, that's the yeah, trouble yeah, yeah. Um, I was looking actually at different cities for the pollution levels and I found that, you know, somewhere that I'm looking to move to, it's got like double or triple the pollution to where I am. So <laughs> that's not a good thing. Oh, no. But, uh, khair, you know, I just thought of, you know, you're talking about going from being quite energetic and stuff to just being quiet unto yourself. Yeah. And it made me think, again, like I said, of the emotions and having strong emotions. Yeah, and he, I don't know exactly how to put it into correct words, right? But there is always this thing that people say that women are more emotional than men, yeah? Yeah. Now, I don't know how... Yeah, and is that actually true? Or is it just the nature of the emotions are different? I, I can't... I think I need to just sit and think on that a little bit before I can talk about it. But what's interesting is in the Qur'an, Allah says, and he mentions men, he says... Uh, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا yeah so from the from the believers are men who have uh, يعني they fulfilled their agreement their contract with Allah and from them also are some who are waiting to, yet to do it and then at the end, Allah says, وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا They didn't change. Now, of course, this is talking, I read the tafsir and stuff. This is talking about their, in their commitment, they didn't change. But also, you could يعني, insinuate, Allah A'lam, that it's about stability, the masculine stability of, yeah. of having that baseline that you're always stable on. And of course, we can understand how uh, women, of course, you can't expect them to have that same level of stability because of the kind of hormonal changes. So it's an interesting point when you, you know, this kind of analysis of ayat, when you're thinking of the masculine, the feminine, the energy, the emotions, yeah, and it's very interesting. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe some people have written about it, maybe not, but it's very mm. interesting. Man. It's uh, my from my point of view it's a lot of it is to do with how much is expressed as opposed to what's felt like yeah I maybe mean, we'll, yeah. everyone feels the same mm -hmm. things but we maybe men express it less mm -hmm. struggle talking about it like i can't this just, i can't describe certain things of, i'm feeling but like my wife will be able to just talk 
yeah talk 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 that that's about. emotional yeah. kind of that's an ability that's um you could say maybe emotional intelligence the ability to put your feelings into words yeah yeah and it won't and it might not even be the actual feeling itself but mm. it will be like this is why i feel like this and this is why i feel like this and this is why mm. I need, do you know what i mean it'll mm. be listing out like this has happened this is what i need blah 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 right. last, like for example yesterday i felt a bit down and i was trying to think like is it this could it be this could it be, do you know what i mean there's yes. things that we swallow and we don't really know if if that's what what's causing it mm. Mm. um mm. but a lot of animals, sometimes right? i feel a bit of a sense of dread yeah and he, dread is a dramatic word but you know what i mean like where you're not looking forward to some something's coming up and you you're not looking forward to it right and whenever i get that feeling it's a very clear feeling sometimes after salah i just sit think about it for two three minutes and i'm like oh yeah I, I just sit and i just think okay what do i have coming up in the next say seven days that i'm not looking forward to and then i realize yeah. oh it's that okay that's why i'm feeling like this and it, yeah. it, it becomes very clear you know something I've been doing recently, which I'm very handily happy with that I pushed myself to do, is um, for our business we sell over the phone. Okay, so okay. you know people get that view of that you know the salesman on the phone kind of yeah. thing. Now, you know if you if you listen to this podcast, you'll know I'm not the guy to be doing that stuff. Like although yeah. I I I'm, I can talk, you know I can talk pretty clearly, whatever, but. I don't really like people. I don't like talking to strangers that much. And so this has been a big kind of struggle for me. But I almost volunteered myself to do it because I just wanted to push myself out of my comfort zone. So yeah. so it's been like a few months doing it. And to be honest, it's hardly easier than the first time I did it now. But mm. but it, I just feel great that I've pushed myself. I'm I'm doing something I don't like. Like, I don't look forward to it. Like, if I have... I have a few calls booked for Monday now and I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm just like, you're going to do it anyway. And I don't know. I'm just really glad I need to be pushing myself like that. It's the anxiety before. Yes. That's worse than actually doing it. Of course, it? because within five minutes starts, you're in the zone. Yeah. Yeah. The moment it starts, it's all away. Mm -hmm. But the build up to it. Oh, it reminds me of work, bro. Mm. It reminds me of work. Like the anxiety that I get. Yeah, on the way as there. As soon as that... As soon as that call comes in, of this is going on, you need to go to it. Mm. Like my, my the anxiety just spikes, bro. Mm. Like it just shoots through the roof, mm. and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Mm. And then the moment I'm there, mm -hmm. like right in that moment, dealing with it, mm. everything else is sort of out the window. Yeah. But when you, when you've with dealt it. with it, what is the feeling then? I'm like, oh, thank god that was over. <laughs> okay, but it but yeah, seems like level, maybe you, do you can kind of congratulate yourself. There is an element of accomplishment, but it depends mm. because what happens is like if it goes well and I do everything I need to do and like I can sort of move on, I'm like, oh, sweet. Things aren't as bad. You know, I could I could see myself doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. But then if there is any element of criticism, mm -hmm. like, oh, you, you forgot to do this or you didn't do this properly or whatever, mm -hmm. like then the anxiety sort of stays because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, like that. Do you know what I mean? Yes, like, yeah, yeah. And then it depends. Like you'll do, th it plays out in your behavior. Like I'll do things so quickly that I should have taken my time. Uh, I miss things because I'm so anxious, whatever. Um, and I think obviously with time, those sort of things sort of uh, pass on. But mm. one thing that does, one thing I've been thinking about a lot lately is that having a sincere connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. and making sincere dua mm -hmm. and then still being in these situations, mm -hmm. you have to make sense of it, don't you? You have to say, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ultimately put me right here, right now. Mm. You know, I've sincerely asked Allah, like, you know, deep in the depths of my heart, asked Allah for what's best. Mm -hmm. Okay. No matter what time, what place, whatever, mm -hmm. just put me where it's best. If I'm still here, yeah. then this right now must be what's best for me, mm. right in this second. Oh. So then you try and look for the wisdoms behind it. So you think, okay, there could be things that I'm learning right now that are fundamental to my progress in this deen. You know, fundamental to my progress as a Muslim and to improve my life and to make things better for my akhirah. So right now, I've got to kind of like the obstacle is the way sort of element. Like mm. I've got to overcome this obstacle because it could be that this obstacle. So something I learn or some sort of something I absorb from this lesson is going to play its part in something more important mm. or something more 
uh, spiritual in the long run or yeah it's like an armor that i'm going to put on mm. that is going to make mm. me a bit tougher mm. towards other things in life you know yeah and if you have the world view that life is for enjoyment you kind of would almost you wouldn't be able to think that way and you would you'd feel disappointed with the fact that you're in a difficult spot because it's like you're wasting your life because you're going through difficulty whereas on that on that point yeah about life in enjoyment like it's a bit of a segue but it just made me think when you're as you i mean thinking about like free time mm. so like okay let's say you've got you know that in a few hours you're gonna have time to yourself you can do anything you want it doesn't it's not gonna be work related or whatever yeah and you want to enjoy that time mm. what do you do what does Amin do <laughs> work really <laughs> um is that because you've got yourself in that mindset of like every second kind of counts yeah exactly if if i'm not mm. producing anything i feel like uh i feel bad about it like okay there are there are times when i do stuff without getting anything uh, so a good i'll give you a real example yeah so when i'm not working like for financial gain um yeah. i will either work on uh this other project i'm working on now or um for example i might watch uh, football yeah okay. watch football with my dad or just on my own whatever okay now when i finish watching that football match versus when i finish working on the project which do i feel better about yeah. always 100 percent the latter like always so i uh, i don't i just always want to be do doing something where at the end of it i get something out of it yeah. but i balance it with the understanding that i do need downtime and that's where the one day a week chilling kind of thing comes in yeah, and it's true. also now and then watching football kind of thing so I think yeah. i've got myself into a routine where i feel like i need downtime every day hmm. and because of it like the moment i have like a lot of free time i spend hmm. all my time wasting it mm -hmm. and then at the end of that i'm like I feel really bad like I haven't done anything I haven't achieved anything and I realize mm -hmm. that like you've said like true enjoyment comes out of accomplishing things bettering yourself and mm. that's why like I've started like tr doing sort of graphic design again and working on that sort of stuff and um, like alhamdulillah there's an element of interest there and people are interested in what I do people are sort of getting me you know commissions and, and you know design posters and all sorts mm, mashallah um, like, very good um yeah and like that was another thing like i know it's a bit of a segue but going on to like social media and the effects it has on your mind and stuff and we've spoken at length about that and mm. um i was speaking to a couple of brothers about it how like when you do have all these social media accounts and stuff it's if it's if it's only about you as an individual and that's what you're putting out in the world then it's not really anything fulfilling there's no fulfillment in just posting a photo of yourself and mm. expecting people to like it you know what's that about mm. do you know what i mean like it's and it, it can do things to your mind but now it's like i took I pretty much transformed my social media so it's purely stuff that i'm making mm. like designing and, and and stuff like that and it's just been so much more mm. um, more fulfilling that way honest. As well. mm. so much more fulfilling bro um so that's what i've been doing lately like if i've got some time I like to get on the computer and sort of either have, you know listen to a lecture or something in the background and just create something you mm -hmm. know and 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 I'm it's not completely empty because what I feel like I'm doing is learning a valuable skill because every time I do something every time I create something I'm trying to implement a new method mm. so that I can apply that to future stuff yeah know? like this is a skill that I've always sort of been fascinated with I've always tried to improve because I've been doing it since I was I don't know I had a bootleg copy of Photoshop when I was like 13 and 14 you know <laughs> yeah so I've always been at that I've always been doing stuff like that and then I took a long break and sort of come back to it now mm -hmm. and it's one of those things like I'm a bit of a jack of all trades like you know ask me to edit a video oh yeah I've got experience doing that ask me to mm. you know do stuff on Photoshop oh yeah I've done that before ask me to make a clothing line oh yeah I did that before mm -hmm. do you know what I mean mm -hmm. and even in if I wasn't practicing like you could say go and make a song on some sort of software or something i'd be like yeah i could do that mm. do you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. I, so um i wanted to pick something and just sort of narrow down on it and double down on it yeah uh and this is this is one of them um mm. 
but this is it so it's about doing something that's more fulfilling as opposed to yeah i don't know just empty just empty behavior yeah like just feeling feeling time but do you feel like you you know you said every day for you need to do that some kind of enjoyment thing yeah do you think when you have that time to do something like that you gravitate towards the more mindless things is it because you're tired maybe it could be that but it's also because of the habits it's literally lifelong habit of doing that Okay. that's what it is and i'm mm. certain it is mm. because it would be you'd go to school all day mm. and then you'd come home and all you wanted to do was play video games with your friends or yeah or whatever until until bedtime yeah you know? and I, that's a habit that i grew that i did when you know growing up mm-hmm. you know, especially when i wasn't practicing like definitely mm. so every day was that every single day bro and even before that like when i was living in tunisia same thing mm. like it'd just be oh i'm back from school uh, I didn't have anybody in, in Tunisia, like friends or whatever. My mum and dad weren't there for the first two years that I was there. So it was like, okay, sweet. Put on the Nintendo 64, or the computer or whatever, and just do something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Just play, 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 and then next day school. And then that would be every single day was like that. Mm. Up until now, where it's almost a similar thing. Like, okay, I've come back from work. Um, my son's now asleep. Like I put my son to sleep. My wife's gone to bed because she's gonna have to get up early. I've got free time. Okay, I'll just play some games mm-hmm. and then I'll go to bed. Mm-hmm. And like, or it'll be like a, it'll be like a, it might be like an anomaly of where I have like a whole day of like suddenly something's happened where I've got like loads of hours, like a whole day basically to myself. Yeah. What do I do? Oh, I panic. Can't think because I haven't planned ahead. Yeah. Can't think of anything productive to do. Yeah. So I default to just nothing. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, like if you had a thing that you you know you're working on, then that would make that decision easier to pick the better thing, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. that's why, like, like if you just got work, family time, and then one project, right? Then when you got free time, you might do the just the pure enjoyment thing, or you that you but you still know that there's the choice of that other project, right? Yeah. Then the other thing that I think uh, helps is is uh, limiting that time. So don't say I will not play games, but just limit it. And sometimes you have to force the limiting because it's addictive, right? So, for example, I, I mentioned this before, of course. I I love YouTube. I watch YouTube probably every day. I go on YouTube. I see, okay, the channels yeah, that I've subscribed same. to, uh, what do they upload, you know? Some of these yeah. videos are really good, right? Um, but the thing is, is that my YouTube is blocked for most of the day and also uh, the amount of time I can spend on YouTube is limited. I've like, um, whatever you want to call it, I've hard wired it into the computer so I can't watch YouTube longer than that. So yeah. I'm not denying myself a mindless enjoyment. Um, I'm not denying it completely. I'm limiting it. So what happens, do you think, if you were to play games after one hour or half an hour, whatever, of playing, it turns off? What are you yeah. going to do at that point? You're going to be like, okay, time for that project that is more fulfilling and this and that, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? So, but yeah. The reality is not, none of that stuff that I'm doing is even fulfilling in itself. Like, it's not like, and I was even looking up a YouTube video about this mm. just to see how other people were sort of reacting. Like, uh, I basically put into it like, oh, I'm not enjoying the things I used to enjoy as much as I did. Okay. You know, and, and, and that is quite a strange phenomenon because you, you, you have this habit of... Mm you know doing things like whether it's video games or watching movies or whatever it is and mm. you're sort of it's almost like drugs bro like not that i've ever done drugs but mm. I've, I've certainly been around people that do do drugs and to them they're like always chasing the high like the first high or what it used yeah. to be like and that's why they always want more and more and more yeah but then it'll never ever reach that sort of level yeah so I think it's it's about trying to replace, trying to find enjoyment in things that are more useful. Mm. The word uh, I think is stimulation. Mm. Yeah. So uh, the high stimulates you, and then you're looking for yeah. that high, that stimulation again and again, right? But you yeah. need a bigger dose to get the same stimulation as the first time. The same. I think I'm honestly. I think I'm chasing the same thing. I'm chasing stimulation, but the difference is, I get stimulation when I feel productive. Yeah, but that's the only difference. Maybe I'm also addicted, isn't it? Addicted to work and benefit, man. You know, actually, funny thing. A few days ago, this is where I think I'm going to have trouble with having kids. Yeah, 
Oh, I'm not. I'm going to have trouble. I'm going to have to improve myself to change how I am. Right? Is a few days ago, I got to the point where I had finished work for the day. I'd worked on my project. I'd watched, you know, some YouTube, and I was like, "Wow, I still got a few hours, Yanni. There's some <laughs> time before before I'm going to go to sleep." So. What do I do? And at that point, I just thought, okay, Yanni, Salah is soon. Before Salah comes, though, I'll just uh, I'll just be with my my son, you know, just uh, do nothing kind of thing. Um, oh. And I realize that I, this is what I realize: I'm going to need to force that into my schedule as he gets older, isn't it? Yeah. Like I'm yeah. going to need to just how I might spend an hour a day on my project, I'm going to have to put at least an hour a day where I'm just purely giving him full attention. Yeah. And probably maybe more than an hour, right? Ideally, so yeah. I'm gonna have to do that, and that's where my productivity addiction is gonna uh, give me trouble. But inshallah, I'll yeah. defeat it. I think my biggest issue, like as a parent, is my my lack of um, like taking him out, like taking mm. my boy out and, 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 and seeing things and doing things. Because mm. what will happen is, especially these winter months, like I'll come home, I just have no desire to be outside. Yes, killer. I have no desire whatsoever. The only time, even if I go out like when I, I go out like once a month, maybe twice a month to see the guys in London, mm. we don't go out. Like we have to, I have to go somewhere that's indoors and sit with them. Mm. I just can't. The concept of just being out and about is just weird and abnormal to me, and I'm not a fan. Mm. But was that before um, you had this job? Uh, no. So when I was mm. working in in what was it Clark's in the stock room there, it was like I was always inside mm. with no windows and whatever so i wanted to be out and i wanted to experience that but now like, i'm always outside like always in town or always surrounded by people and mm. the public mm-hmm. and i just don't want that I like it. so when i'm when i when i'm done i just want to get home as quick as possible and i think that's what steps puts me like it stops me going to the gym or it stops me doing anything after work or whatever mm-hmm. um because all i want at that point the moment I clock off is I just want to go home mm. <laughs> I just want to be with my family mm. um, but what I do is like I'll come home and generally speaking if I haven't if I'm not ridiculously tired which is rare I will come I'll play with my son for like an hour or two mm-hmm. uh, before dinner or whatever and that you know that's sort of like a routine that I've sort of developed but lately I, I remember like the other day I, I got up and he was up obviously before all of us and I was like, oh, I haven't actually taken you out in a while. Mm-hmm. Like, just me and him, mm-hmm. just do something. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I realized, like, it's kind of sad, really, because he's he runs around the house and he's, you know, loving life and stuff, but he's completely clueless as to what he's missing out on. Yes. You know, and he's completely clueless as to what he's missing. And the moment you tell him that we're going to go outside or we'll go to the park or the beach or whatever, his face just lights up, bro. Like, he's just ridiculously excited. Mm. He goes and grabs his coat and he's like, you know... Let's go. And it's like, okay, mm. yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and it, that's what, I think that's what you're sort of alluding to is um, we don't, like I'm so, f- I've always thought about this when I was growing up. I was like, how come my mum and dad like sacrifice so much of their time to, to me? like to do what I need mm-hmm. take me where I need to go etc etc like I don't and I could never understand how I'm going to do that as a parent like mm. how can I put myself aside and start thinking about what's best for this this child that I'm going to have one day you know mm. you have those thoughts yeah. and now it's the child's here and it's not it's not like some magical transformation I'm still the same person <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what I mean yeah. I always thought oh when you have kids something's going to switch on in your mind that you're going to become a different person and that's how you're going to deal with these issues you know mm. as opposed to mm. oh no you're just the same person you've just got physically changed things you know yeah and that fascinated yeah. me but here i am and i'm like oh god i should probably start acting like a good parent <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was so fulfilling bro like i took him out uh it was christmas day actually alhamdulillah i had the day off took him out and no one was at the park mm. which on one hand is kind of sad because it's just my son running around mm. going up and down a slide <laughs> really lonely <laughs> yeah but on the other hand, like I was spending time with him and I was trying to engage with him and you know, I had I didn't have my phone out or anything and it's just hundred percent this is all, you know, this is for you kind of thing. Yeah. And it was amazing, bro. It was so fulfilling because you can tell like kids, man, like the reason why they can be annoying and, and like get in your way and all this other stuff is because all they want is your attention. Like if he's watching something on YouTube, bro, 
or whatever. Like if he's watching something, he doesn't want to watch it on his own. He wants you to be in the room mm. with him while yeah. he's watching it so that he can turn around and react to you yeah and he can shout like he sees a fire truck he wants to shout at you oh look it's a fire truck yes you know yes but when he's on when you're not engaged even if like you think oh he's you know he's fine he's taking care of himself he's playing with his toy mm. or he's watching something mm. or whatever that's not what's important what's important is like you're having that engagement and i remember feeling like that bro this is what fascinated me i remember always loving it if someone was in the room with me while i was playing a video game this is when I was a kid mm. like when I was young like if my my mum was sitting with me while I was playing something I'd be like oh mum look 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 what I'm about to do look what I'm about to do do you know what I mean and that's what's that's what's the fascinating and important thing is having that sort of level of engagement so yeah, yeah bro that's it's going to be a lot do. it's going to be a lot of stuff bro it's going to be a lot of like <laughs> Because you, you know, ultimately, you want to be the best parent you possibly can be, mm-hmm. right? And I know, and I'm talking about you specifically. Mm. I forget myself, you specifically, because that's your sort of nature. You're going to want to have that sort of level of, you know, this is I'm going to be questioned about this, so I need to do the best I can. And ultimately, you know, why are you working anyway? It's all t- to provide for your family and stuff, isn't mm-hmm. it? Because if you were living on your own, you probably wouldn't have to work as hard. Like you just go by the bare minimum and accept. Well. Some people could argue that, you know, except except the basics kind of thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is this is a completely different level. It's not about work anymore. It's about being present in the moment and and not missing yeah. out. And the thing thing is, like our childhoods, we remember our childhoods as being this super long thing. Yes. Like if you think back to your childhood, you think, oh, those years. Look at those. Like it felt like an eternity mm-hmm. of you being a kid. Mm-hmm. But like looking at how quickly my son's growing up, I'm like, what? I used to think these ages were so long, but now he's already two and he's almost three. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. the time's going really quickly. So when we mm. even observe their childhood, it goes in a blink of an eye. But when they're experiencing their childhood, it's mm. such a long journey for them yeah. because it's such a proportionately they've only lived mm. like he's two, so he's he, you know one, a whole year was half of his life. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. that that that's why it feels so long. Yeah. So what it means is that the imprints that are left on those experiences that he's had mm. are much more effective yeah. than, a, than like you know a year in his life at this stage mm-hmm. is full of imprints and, and effects that we you know put on him so that whole year of mm. our interaction and stuff is so valuable compared to maybe a year of your life I mean like mm. you could forget like what was 2018 to you yeah. you can't probably you probably can't even remember yeah. like what what happened in 2018 that really left I mean maybe you got I don't know Allah I can't remember when you got married and stuff mm. like big life changes but you've had you've had years that have just gone by that you can't remember anything huge happening <laughs> yeah I know I certainly do yeah 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 do you know what I mean but for them a whole year bro that's insane amount of like imprints and yes. experiences yeah. and, and learning stuff and things that have influenced their personality and, and it's it, easy bro if you think of um, if you give you know they say that by around age 12 you've like Eighty percent of the influence you can have on your child is done. Hmm. Okay, exactly, age twelve, yeah. maybe even age tenish, right? So, if you gave your kids twelve years, right? Inshallah, you're still gonna live another twenty, thirty years after that, where you can do yeah. your stuff for the ummah, the dawah, whatever it is. So. But because those, like you're saying, those first 10 years are so important, they have so much influence on how they're going to turn out, you're going to really want to make it a priority. And so mm. that's why I have to rewire my brain to see spending time with my son as my, yani one of my main goals in life, you know, like you're saying. Um, whether, whether I, by the way, I might not feel fulfillment from it, right? But I, I, I need to re- try and rewire my brain, you know, to see it that way. Uh, because you don't see the fruits of it do you straight away yes you see their face light up you see them enjoying themselves but you you, you might think to yourself or I, maybe me i'm talking for myself i am spending time with my son so that i give him plenty of attention i teach him about the world he feels secure so that when he's an adult you know he's a secure confident person who can go out there and, and do stuff right yeah but i won't see the fruits of it until he's an adult so yeah. you just got to put in the hours without really knowing 
but you just i guess you have to trust the basic facts that giving attention is always going to be a good thing giving uh you know encouragement and these things are always going to be a good thing isn't it so yeah. i think the, um, the most valuable thing to me and basing off my experience is it's just trying to have a level of communication where because my biggest fear is him not being able to talk to me mm. because that was the issue i had growing up it's like just not not because I can't talk to my dad, because I struggle to. I just don't know how to. And he doesn't yeah. know how to talk to me. You know, he will get shy and he won't yeah. be able to reply and stuff. So this is it. Like, I want him to be... But it's about balancing it. Like, you don't want to be too much because then you're just a joke. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. You know? Oh, so it's hard. It's hard, man. Mm. And then all of this doesn't get achieved unless you're putting in time and effort and focus. Yeah. That's um, why it starts with yourself, isn't it? Working on yourself. Yeah. Only then, like, a good... Uh, like a failure of a man can never be a good father you know mm. when I, I when i say failure of a man i don't mean like job or this or that i mean internally how he is as a person that person would always struggle to be a good parent so it starts inside and then it goes to your family and then it may go further to the umma etc oh definitely and then put on top of all of that that we're you know it's something we're going to be questioned about as paula you mm -hmm. know so Crazy, crazy, crazy. Right, I mean, mm. you know what that means when I say right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. It means uh, it means I've got family coming over, and I need to get the house. Oh, ready and very do some nice. Shopping and, Mashallah. Yeah, I know. By the family way, that's that's. I I wanted to just mention quickly. Yeah, you know, when it comes to kids, I feel like you know, talk about giving them attention and encouragement and this and that. Yeah, they would almost equally benefit from you know their grandmother, their aunt, their uncle giving them mm. that attention. And Yani, it's a different flavor of attention and it's very important, Yani, for them to feel comfortable around uh, different people, people they don't yeah. live with, people they don't see every single day and people of different ages. You know, that's really useful. And I think, you know, with the whole, uh, you know, families being smaller, if you like, and not seeing the distant family as often, that's becoming yeah. a big problem. Even... Even, you know, we're saying how hard it is for the mother and, you know, it affects the mother more than the father, especially in the early years. But yeah. but the truth is, this is, yeah, I mean, this one I'm confident is, is a fact, is that yeah. before the mother would be able to spread the work around among many different women, you know, her sisters, her mother, her this, her that, isn't it? Um, and I, I've seen that myself in Algeria. You know, for example, one of my cousins, um, she works and she's able to leave her sons with her mother, you know, and they're spending right, time yeah. with their grandmother. And that's a different flavor of attention. And they're still getting attention. There's still someone that she can trust and who uh, who loves them and stuff. So it, it's 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 a good, you know. I think uh, on, on that, it's the family aspect. Alhamdulillah, like my family are brilliant. But in terms of the male role models, mm. very few and far between. Mm. And the issue is, like, the, the men that, he, like, I don't know, there's no real PG, uh, PC way of saying this, but as far as praying, fully practicing, like, whatever, visibly Muslim men, mm. all he really has is myself. Mm. So if he doesn't. What about doesn't, Uncle Amin, bro? Well, you know, you're far, bro. <laughs> you know? And I don't think you'd have time to sort of engage with him. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what I'm trying to say, like, yeah. you know, I'm the one with the big beard and the and the braids and whatever. Mm. Okay, uh, he's going to link those sort of things to me. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying that his you know his uncles and his grandparents or whatever are bad. They're brilliant with him. Absolutely amazing. But the key thing that he's going to link is the fact that I'm pushing this Dean thing on him mm. you know like okay you need to go and pray you yeah he might see that, that so, as weird because yeah others are so not. he can easily just not be interested mm. you know sometimes for example like okay there's days where like I know I'm running out of time but I just want to quickly point this out like he's two years old right so there's days he'll run into the bedroom before Fajr and he'll be like blah 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 but it's time to pray time to pray like he wants to get me up yeah yeah so he'll say that that's because he sees me praying yeah. I'll tell him about prayer he will start doing the actions mm. like, this is just for observing mm. but then there's times where like um, we're going to go out or something like he knows that something fun's about to happen but before we do it I have to pray mm -hmm. so I'm like okay wait we need to pray like you know Baba needs to pray and he's like no no pray 
yeah. and then I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, and then I start visualizing that in the future. Like, oh. could you imagine if he turns around, he says he doesn't want to pray. What oh, am I going to yeah. do? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and I visibly see it because obviously he doesn't. He's a kid. He's two years old. So he just sees it as a routine or something that's done. Mm. But when he says that, bro, mm. like suddenly the, all these sort of thoughts start yeah, coming into man. your mind. Like, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> yeah. how do I teach him that I have to do this? That's and I'm like, uh, no, we need to pray. Come here. Mm. You're going to pray with me. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's scary, man. But Can you imagine, bro? Mm. That... But he says it now. Like if mm. he doesn't want to, mm. because we're about to do something, yeah, yeah. he'll say it. Yeah. It's part of Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, that's why you need to make du'a, you know, as much as you're putting time into things, you need to make du'a, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, oh, I don't even think we might have touched on some of the stuff we wanted to talk about. (laughs) You know, these free, these free flowing episodes are fine, bro. Yeah, they're good, man. This was a very good one. Better than last one, for sure. Uh, We we, we weren't distracted at all. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Just distracted with our own thoughts, bro. Yeah, yeah. Shortcomings. Man, I hope I don't sound like this. Uh, like I'm. Uh, what's the word? Wow, that's some. That's a. That's a very good set of lungs he's got. He's got. <laughs> should I get him in? <laughs> Go on then. I'll just okay, say. No, let him come in. I don't want to sound like I'm. You make me sound like I'm sick or something. Um, but I, I just don't want to give off that thing, that impression. Okay. Hey, say hello to the listeners. Don't unplug the microphone. Ah, hey, Slimo. Ah, Labas. Papa. Say, say hello. Hello. How's everybody? Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is episode 57. <laughs> say something. You, mum, it's a selfie. It's a what? It's a selfie. A dolphin. Where's selfie. A dolphin? Okay, that's enough for you. <laughs> All done. All done. <laughs> Okay, thank Allah you very much. Allah. And uh, this has been Ajana episode 57 of the Mind Heist <laughs> podcast. Um, you still there, I mean? Yes, I bro. I haven't done anything. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> um, uh, what was it? Check out. Just go to mindheistpodcast.com and everything's on there. <laughs> Inshallah. Okay, great episode, bro. Jazakallah khairan. Take care, everyone. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu wa na ila ala anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Excellent.